So today we're going to um, work with some long polynomial division. And before we start with long polynomial division, we need to go back to the basics for a minute and kind of refresh our memory on how we do divide something like 95 divided by 7. First of all, what we can do is we can set this up. It's 95 divided by 7. When we work this problem out, what we ask ourselves is, how many times does 7 go into 9? Well, if 7 goes into 9, one time. So we take 1 times 7, which is 7, and then we subtract. So 9 minus 7 is 2. And now we're going to bring down our 5. And we go through the same process. We ask ourselves, well, how many times does 7 go into 2? Well, it doesn't. Well, how many times does 7 go into 25? It goes into 3 times. 3 times 7 is 21. And then we subtract. Well, 25 minus 21 is... 4. And 4 is our remainder, which your elementary teacher who taught you division probably taught you to do R4. But we're going to write the remainder in simplest fraction form. So we take our 4 and we divide by what we're dividing by, which is the 7. So 95 divided by 7 is 13 and 4 sevenths. That's the answer. We're going to use this idea in a couple of minutes when we do long polynomial division. So let's look at what we're talking about here. When we factor a polynomial, what we're trying to do is we're just trying to find a factor that gives a quotient, the answer to the division problem. It gives the quotient, and maybe it also gives a remainder which your elementary teacher, again, called R. But the thing is, if we can divide, we might be able to find a factor, which is kind of what we're, where we're going with the rest of our year's concept here. The thing that we have to remember here, in polynomial long division, we have to write the terms in order of degree. This means write both polynomials in standard form. But when we're writing them in order of degree, and you decide whether you need this or not, but it's descending order. So I, I don't know that you need to write that down, but descending order is really important. So, um, how does this work? I've got some steps out here to the left. But it says use the polynomial long division to divide 4x squared plus 23x minus 16 by x plus 5. So remember that this is one of these concepts where you might not understand it on the first example. Or you might not understand it on the second. And then you start to get it on the third and hopefully by the fourth. But our steps are, first of all, we're going to take 4x squared. And notice that this polynomial is in descending order, along with the x plus 5, both in descending order and standard form. We start with taking 4x squared divided by x. Well, 4x squared, if you need to, is 4 times x times x <coughs> divided by x. The x's cancel out. So what we have up here is we're going to have 4x. Well, just like we did with our 95 divided by 7, we take 4x times x to get the 4x squared. And we also take 4x times 5, which is 20x. We multiply 4x by both of the values that we're dividing by. And then we need to subtract. Subtract to get 3x. We took 4x times x, 4x squared. 4x times 5 to get the 20x. And then we're going to subtract. 
But what I typically say, even though technically it is subtraction, is I typically say change both sides. That's the subtraction. Change both sides. So it says subtract to get 3x. Well, when we do that, 4x squared minus 4x squared is 0. 23x plus a negative 20x is 3x. And now that leads us to our next step. Bring down negative 16. Well, we're going to bring that down. Like we brought down the 5 on our earlier example. And now we're going to go through that process again. So what that process is, is that we're going to take the 3x and we're going to divide by the x. We don't have to pay attention to the plus 5 right now. We're going to take the 3x and we're going to divide by x. And 3x divided by x is 3. It's positive 3x divided by positive x, which is positive 3. So we divide. Now we're going to multiply. 3 times x. 3 times 5 is 15. It's positive 3 times positive 5, which is positive 15. We are going to subtract next. And subtract to me means change both signs. The three x's cancel out. And this time we have negative 16 plus a negative 15, which is negative 31. And that negative 31 is our remainder. And when we write our remainder, it's going to be minus 31 divided by the x plus 5. I'll pause here for a minute. Number two. Number two. Same kind of process. The nice part is that we are in proper format. And what we're always trying to do is we're always trying to get rid of the highest degree term. So everything is working with the variables. So when we start with this, we've got x cubed divided by x. And worst comes to worst. If you have to do this, x times x times x divided by x. But x cubed divided by x is simply x squared. Once we determine that value up there in our quotient, that's when we go to the multiply step. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times 4 is 4x squared. And let's change both signs. When we change both signs, the highest degree term should cancel out. x cubed minus x cubed cancels out. Then we have 2x squared plus a negative 4x squared, which is negative 2x squared. Bring down the minus 5x. So we're going to repeat that process. So we're going to take negative 2x squared this time, our highest degree term, divide by x. In terms of the division, if you need to with the variables, x times x divided by x. So we end up with negative divided by positive is negative 2x. Once we determine that value in our quotient, 
we say negative 2x times x is negative 2x squared. Negative 2x times 4 is negative 8x. Change the signs. And once again, the highest degree term, the 2x squared, cancels out. And then we're left with negative 5x plus 8x, which is 3x. And we'll bring down the 12. So we're going to repeat the process yet again. Trying to get rid of the highest degree term. This time our highest degree term is 3x. We're going to divide by x. And 3x divided by x is simply 3. It's positive 3x divided by positive x. So it's positive 3. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times 4 is 12. Change both signs. Which turns out nice here because we do not have a remainder. We have nothing left at 0. And something for me to point out here is that this means that x plus 4 is a factor of the polynomial x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x plus 12. When we do not have a remainder, what we're dividing by is a factor of that problem. So let's look at uh, example number 3. So now we don't have that division bar symbol in there, so we're going to have to set up the problem appropriately. But it's going to be x cubed plus 13x squared minus 12x minus 8 divided by x minus 2. And we want to get rid of the highest degree term. So our highest degree term as we start this problem is x cubed. So we're going to take x cubed divided by the x. Worst comes to worst with x times x times x divided by x. And what we end up with is we end up with We're going to take x squared, we're going to multiply by x, give this x cubed, x squared times negative 2, which is negative 2x squared, change both signs. The x cubes cancel out. 13x squared plus 2x squared is 15x squared, and I don't really need to write that plus. 15x squared minus 12x. We're going to bring down that 12x, including the sign in front of it. And then we're going to try to get rid of the highest degree term. And the highest degree term now is 15x squared. We're going to divide by x. Well, 15x squared divided by x is 15x. If you are confused on the variables, you can expand it out. x times x divided by x. It's going to be positive 15x, because both of those values were positive already. 15x times x is 15x squared. 15x times negative 2 is negative 30x. Change both sides. And once again, 
what happens is we get rid of the highest degree term. The 15x squareds cancel out. And we're left with negative 12x plus 30x, which is 18x. And we're going to bring down the negative a. Minus a. So we need to repeat the process again, getting rid of the highest degree term. Now it is 18x divided by x. x divided by x is 1, so we're left with 18. In fact, it's going to be positive 18. 18 times x is 18x. 18 times negative 2 is negative 36. Change both signs. Negative 8 plus 36 is 28. There's a remainder. So when we finish here, we want to write our remainder in simplest fraction form. So this is going to be plus 28 divided by x minus 2. Um, just a little bit different on this one. If you look back at the previous three examples, we were dividing by x plus 4, x minus 2, uh, x plus 5. Now we're dividing by 2x minus 3, but the process is exactly the same. 2x cubed minus x squared plus 5x minus 12 divided by 2x. Minus three. So we get that written there. And uh, now what we want to do is we want to get rid of the highest degree term. So it's 2x cubed divided by 2x. And 2 divided by 2 is 1. <laughs> and if you need to with the variables, I hope you don't have to, x cubed divided by x is x squared. So we're going to put x squared up here in our quotient. x squared times 2x is 2x cubed. x squared times negative 3 is negative 3x squared. Change both signs. Now one other little piece here that people have to be careful of is the 2x cubes do cancel out, so that's not the careful part. But this is negative x squared plus 3x squared. Sometimes people forget that the number in front of this x squared term is a 1. So this is really negative 1x squared plus the 3x squared, which gives us positive 2x squared. And then we're going to bring down the 5x. So you may or may not need to write that 1 into the problem, just a reminder, because sometimes it's out of sight, out of mind. But once we go through our subtraction here, we want to get rid of the highest degree term, which is the 2x squared divided by the 2x. And luckily enough, the 2s cancel out again. 2 divided by 2 is 1. If you have to, write out the x's. x squared divided by x simply gives us x. It's positive divided by positive, so it's positive x. And x times 2x squared is x times 2x is 2x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Change both signs. And the 2x squared cancel out. And now we have 5x plus 3x, which is 8x. We will bring down the negative 12. And we'll repeat that process one more time. Getting rid of the highest degree term. So it's going to be uh, 8x divided by 2x. Uh, both of those are positive. Positive 8x divided by positive 2x. The x's cancel out. 
and 8 divided by 2 is 4. And this is going to be plus 4. And then it's 4 times 2x is 8x. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Change both signs. And then we do. We do not have a remainder. When we do not have a remainder, that means, in this case, that 2x minus 3 is a factor of 2x cubed minus x squared plus 5x minus 12. So, kind of a backwards kind of factoring. And division is helping us with our factoring process. Problem number five. We have these two polynomials that we're going to be dividing, but watch out. We're missing a cube term. That's important on this problem. So far, we haven't had any missing terms when we started this, but when we set this problem up, this has to be 4x to the fourth. We're missing a cubed term, so what I like to do is I like to write in 0x cubed. We need to have a place value for every term, even though technically there is not a cubed term there. Minus the 5x squared plus the 2x plus the 4. And then we're going to divide by 2x minus 1. So make sure that you write in any missing terms or at least leave a space for any missing terms. But once we get that set up, now we're going through the same process. I'm probably sounding like a broken record to some of you right now. But this process, this long polynomial division, there is a definite pattern that we go through. Starting with, in this case, our 4x to the 4th divided by 2x getting rid of the highest degree term. Well, 4 divided by 2 is 2, and then we have x, 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 divided by x, if you have to write it out longhand. 4 divided by 2 is 2, x cubed. 2x cubed times 2x is 4x to the 4th. 2x cubed times negative 1 is negative 2x cubed. Change both sides. And the 4x to the 4th cancel out. And we have 0x cubed plus 2x cubed, which is 2x cubed. And then we're going to bring down the 5x squared. Then we're going to go through that process again, getting rid of the highest degree term. So we have 2x cubed divided by 2x. Nice on this one because 2 divided by 2 is 1. And then we have x cubed divided by x, which is x squared. It's positive 2x cubed divided by positive 2x, which is positive x squared x squared times 2x is 2x cubed. x squared times negative 1 is negative 1x squared. No, you don't have to write the 1, but again, remember sometimes it's out of sight, out of mind. We need to change both signs. That's the subtraction process. Our 2x cubes cancel out. And we are left with negative 5x squared plus 1x squared, which is negative 4x squared. And let's bring down the 2x, including the sign in front of it, so plus 2x. So we can get rid of the highest degree term of negative 
4x squared divided by 2x. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. And then x times x divided by x. So it's going to be negative 2x. Negative 2x times 2x is negative 4x squared. Exactly what we want. Negative 2x times negative 1 is positive 2x. Change the sign. thing is here, we get zero right there. Everything canceled out this time. But don't forget that we still have this plus four up there. Which means that that plus four in this particular case is going to be our remainder of four divided by two x minus one. So we didn't have a constant term in this case because everything canceled out. And to finish, reminder, um, if we are missing terms, we need to fill them in. Or at least leave some kind of space to account for them. I like to write in the terms with a zero. So we have x cubed. We don't have an x squared in this particular case, nor do we have an x. So we can put in more than one missing term. And then minus 6 here. We're going to divide by x minus 1. And our goal is to get rid of the highest degree term. So it's going to be x cubed divided by x. Once again, long hand means that we are going to have x squared. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times negative 1 is negative 1x squared change both sides. The x cubes gets well. And 0x squared plus 1x squared is 1x squared. And then we're going to bring down the 0x. We want to get rid of the highest degree term. So now we're going to take x squared divided by x. Again, if we write it out longhand, I hope you don't have to. But x squared divided by x is x is positive divided by positive, so it's positive x. x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative 1x. Change the sign. The x squared cancel out. 0x plus 1x is 1x. And let's bring down the 6, including its sign, which is going to be the minus 6. So we want to get rid of the highest degree term. The highest degree term is x this time. We're going to be dividing by x. And x divided by x is 1. In fact, it's positive 1. And then we multiply. 1 times x. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Change both sides. I know I sound like a broken record, but if I can get that in your head, sometimes it's the very last step that people go wrong because they forget to change both sides. But in this case, what we have is we have the x's canceling out, and negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. There's our remainder. which means that x minus 1 is not a factor. 
of this polynomial that we just divided, the x cubed minus x. But that leads me here to finish with the last part on your paper, this um, factor there. And it simply says, and I think it shows up better on examples than in words, but it simply says that if we divide by something like x plus 2, and we end up with a remainder of 0, then x plus 2 is a factor of the polynomial. In other words, in this case, for our example, if we took x equals negative 2, and we filled it back into this polynomial, and we ended up with 0, or we should end up with 0, again, that means that x plus 2 is a factor of this polynomial, x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 12.